Welcome to the Get in the Fight podcast. My name is Nate Whitson, and I'm the founder of Get in the Fight Ministries and our exclusive online fight club for Christian men. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping Christian men become the men that God meant for them to be. So if you're looking for helpful content and conversations that can help you to grow and become the man that God made you to be, then you're in the right place. But before we get started, please do me a huge favor and be sure to subscribe, click the like button, and then leave us a five-star review. Doing that helps us to reach more men who are looking for content just like this. Also, if you'd like to learn more about our mission and how to get involved or how to join the Fight Club, then head on over to getinthefight.club. That's getinthefight.club and learn more today. But without further ado, it's time to get in the fight. So let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the Get in the Fight podcast. I'm your host, Nate Whitson, and I am the founder of this ministry called Get in the Fight. This is a place for Christian men who really are just not wanting to settle for status quo. This is for guys that are tired of just showing up to church, showing up to life, coasting through and not pushing to be great. If that's you, if that resonates with you and God is really just stirring you up to say, our time is limited, let's go. Let's go after this thing. Let's live the best lives that we can. Then you're in the right spot. You're in a good place because... God wants to use you. He has great purpose for you. And we just want to encourage and spur one another on to great things because God needs you in the fight. Your family needs you in the fight. So today we're we're talking about intentional parenting. And in particular, it's a second part of a two-part series called 12 Mistakes Parents Make. Tim Elmore had written a book called something along that lines, 12 huge mistakes that parents can avoid. I think that's the title of it. And I'll, I'll put a link to that in this show notes for you. I'm not going like a traditional book review like I like to do sometimes and kind of chapter by chapter teach through it or share some thoughts through that. But it inspired this idea anyways. And so I wanted to take 12 mistakes that are common to us all and figure out like, how do we get better? How do we be better dads than we were a year ago, a day ago, whatever? And how do we just push forward into this great calling of leading our families? One of the things that I said in episode 52, which I encourage you to go back and listen so you can hear the first six of these 12 mistakes, was that we're tempted by the devil to give up too quick. We're, we're tempted by the devil to get discouraged whenever we hear things like this because you're going to listen to these next six mistakes and probably identify with many of them, maybe all of them. The point isn't that you will be a perfect dad. There's only one of those, and he exists in heaven. He is a perfect father. Only he is good. But we are trying to be molded more and more into the image of him and of his son. And so, you know, of course you're going to get this wrong. Of course this isn't going to be perfect. God's grace is so necessary and good throughout all of our lives. Uh, and it's necessary for our children to understand that they have broken dads who keep fighting though, who keep trying. And that's really what I want you to take from this is uh, don't, don't buy into the enemy's lie that it's too late. No matter how old your kids are, if they are grown and they're in their fifties and they're living on their own and you're in your seventies and you're listening to this, it's still not too late. If your kids are in the house and yet you have some who are 17, 18, 19 years old, it's not too late. So just know that this is about you pushing into maybe some uncomfortable areas to fight to be a better dad. And so just have the right attitude going into this. Understand that we're all broken. This isn't about trying to be perfect, but more like the perfect one every single day. And that's what we're fighting for here. So again, if you missed episode number 52 go back and listen to that you can hear six different mistakes but today we're going to finish the other six starting at mistake number seven which is this prioritizing perfection over connection this is a this is a tricky one isn't it uh we have so much pride and ego in our lives that we probably don't even realize how much that happens like we we want things to be perfect but why what what is it really <laughs> that that drives us to want to give this perfect image of kids who are obedient a family who just has fun and loves each other i mean if you look at people's you know instagram or twitter or whatever they use 
Like we're always putting on these pictures of just like this perfect looking family. And it's not like you would want to look at ones where everybody's freaking out and angry or real life stuff either, right? Like you don't want to show that either. But there's a pressure that we put on ourselves to try to make sure everything is perfect. And that can just wear you out as a dad. It definitely wears out your kids. Too many parents, I think, too many dads are trying really hard to present this picture of perfect. And when your kids are kids and they make mistakes like you did and continue to still today, we tend to, as dads, I think, sometimes just overreact to that. And we we let our ego and our pride just disrupt our best efforts, I guess, right? The point of this is here is this. Rather than prioritizing perfection over connection, let's flip that around. Focus more on the connection with your kids over worrying about how perfect everything is. And I, and I tell you, I feel this one <laughs> because I like clean spaces. I, I like shoes in a certain order. I think there's a space for all the junk that you have. Half of it should be at least in the garbage, right? Like we don't just hang on to stuff we don't need. This is like a real issue for me of where not even necessarily trying to present my kids as perfect, but I like them to fold their blankets, put away their crap, <laughs> you know, clean the house, all that kind of stuff. I just, I like it neat and organized, but it gets in the way. I know for sure that my desire to have clean spaces and kids that are hard workers and take care of things gets in the way of caring about them and connecting with them in a, in a better way. And so for me, this is a mistake I make all the time. And God is definitely working on me to make sure that I keep the connection with them stronger than my desire for perfection. And maybe that'll help you too. Mistake number eight that I wrote down was ignoring emotional needs. This is an area where I think for men, we've got to figure out how to be more open to a conversation like this. The, the traditional man is thought of as being very disconnected from his emotions. And certainly God has created men and women different in general like this. Not all of us are, are, you know, molded exactly the same, fortunately. But in general, men tend to be able to compartmentalize emotions and still get stuff done without having to carry all of it and intertwine it and mix it in like a woman's brain in general is wired. And, and that's a good thing. We, we are served well by being able to kind of put emotions over here and still go get stuff done over here. However, the scriptures speak a lot to us about loving the Lord with all of our heart. Well, our heart is emotions and our will and our mind and all of these internal things. And when we don't learn how to you know, get below the surface, when we don't know how to read those spiritual gauges that are going on, we are missing out on becoming better men. We are missing out on what it means to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Like, for example, when I feel emotionally out of whack, if I don't learn how to deal with that feeling of boredom or anxiety or worry or whatever the emotion is, if I just let it affect me without any kind of pause or emotional intelligence at all, I'm going to most likely act out in ways that are inappropriate or not my best, right? So what we need to do is go like, okay, I'm feeling a certain way and process those feelings through the word of God so that we can live bigger, better lives. This is a huge, huge issue. And I, for the sake of this conversation, we won't take it much further than that. But we need to learn to do that very thing. Analyze the feeling recognize that it's there for a reason, see what's going on, and then act accordingly. Now, that's true for us, because if you want to be a better dad, you can't be driven by your emotions. If you want your kids to be healthy, they need to learn, like you and I need to learn, how to also manage what's going on in their heart. We need to be able to teach our kids how to go like, what are you feeling right now? What's going on? Why is that? What does God say about this? How should we respond? What's appropriate? What's wise? Things like that. So that we can live better, healthier, stronger, more God-honoring lives. So in, in this conversation, what I'm saying is mistake number eight is when you ignore 
those emotional needs. And when you ignore those emotional needs and you don't know how to process it in you, guess what happens, Dad? You also don't know how to think about what's going below the surface in your kids either. And again, I look at this and I think, I have got so much room to grow in this area. When my kids are flipping out, I don't tend to go like, what's going on in their heart? Although I should. I say, what the heck is wrong with you? Now, I don't say that typically out loud. I might think it in my head, though, let's be honest. But I need to grow. This is an area of weakness. This is an area where I need to make sure I know that there's something emotionally going on in the heart of my kid. And I need to process that myself and process that with them and teach them how to do that. So that's it for that one. Ignoring emotional needs, though, is a mistake parents make. And we need to have more of these conversations to figure out how do I learn emotional intelligence and how do I teach them to do the same. Mistake number nine is comparison with other parents. I don't know if men struggle with this as much as women, but I know it's there. And so let's talk about it. There is something super unhelpful and certainly negative when you are worried so much about what other parents think. I just think, you know, the the phrase that comes to my mind always is comparison is the thief of all joy. It's such a great quote and it's such an important one. When you are comparing your kids and their behavior typically, this is where this probably comes in for most of us, with what you are watching from a distance in somebody else's life, it's just unnecessary. Pride and ego make us go, why can't you be better like this? Don't embarrass me in front of my friends. Why? Because we're more concerned about us, not our kids. When I'm worried about that, I'm worried about my own image really nothing to do with my kids. So I have to really check myself as a dad. You might have to check yourself. When you are worried about comparing yourself with other parents, it's not helpful. And it's mostly about you. It's not really about your kids, right? Like your kids are going to be kids. And probably those other parents that you're worried about impressing have kids that freak out and screw up too. And they're thinking, man, this is tough. I get it. (laughs) You know, like there's compassion that's given because anytime you have a baby that's crying on the plane, I'm always like, dude, that sucks. I know. And and just compassion for them. Like I get it. Maybe we can help. Who knows? Right? Like I don't get frustrated because I know there's nothing you can do. Right. But we as parents are so worried about what other people think that it just steals our joy. If that's you just embrace the idea that your family, the dynamics with which you operate the way that your kids are, they have a sin nature. You're there to help guide them through that. It's not going to be perfect. It's not it's not always a clean looking, you know, situation. And you just got to deal with that and say, you know what, this is about training and guiding my kids, doing it in love and not worrying about trying to compare myself with somebody else. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the show so far. And if you are, please do me a big favor and simply get engaged in a simple way for you. That might be clicking the like button or maybe subscribing to the show. For others, it may be commenting on a show that really stands out to them, or maybe it's just copying the URL and texting it to a friend or pasting that into your social media or sharing it via text, whatever it is. All of those things make a huge difference for us, and it helps us to reach more Christian men who are trying to live bigger and better lives. So number one, thank you for being a listener, and thank you for being a part of this community and part of this show. We appreciate it more than you know. And we appreciate you getting engaged and helping us out. Thanks so much. Now back to the show. Mistake number 10, overloading our schedules. Man, this is so true, isn't it? If there's anything that we hear, any phrase I think that's heard more than any other today, it's I'm so busy. You know, it's like if if you talk about things that matter most to you in your life as a dad, you would say, gosh, I would, I would like to be able to spend more time just to go fish with the kids or to go for walks or spend one-on-one time or whatever it is, right? If you identify something that's super important to do as a dad and you follow it up with, I would love to, but, and then you fill in the excuse, typically with, I'm just so busy, something's got to give. Something, something is wrong in this picture, right? We have said yes to way too much. We say yes to so many things. In fact, in episode 52, we talk about the idea that we don't prioritize spiritual development with our kids as much as I think maybe we should. 
So we say yes to every sporting event over church and over our other priorities, like just being together. We fill our schedules every week with all kinds of stuff. And some of it's really good stuff, but some of it probably needs to go. Some of it is just too much. If you are constantly saying, I would love to, I think that's important, but we don't have time to go spend time with other friends and families. We don't have time for spiritual things. We don't have time for things that are good and necessary and important. Then your schedule is too heavy. How do you get rid of that? You've got to get your priorities in order. You've got to say, my priorities for our family are this, this, and this. And then you've got to cut out some of the crap. You've got to cut out some of the stuff that just is good, but not as important as those things. That's going to be tough, right? You're going to feel like a letdown. You're going to feel like your kids are saying, why can't we do what everybody else is doing? I don't want to just sit here and talk as a family, right? You're going to get pushback like that. But you are the leader, dad. You are the one who is the spiritual head of your home. You are the one, dad, who needs to prioritize schedules and routines because your kids are going to be following your lead. They need it. They won't want it. It will be a struggle. You'll be saying no to other good things, but you're doing it because you're going to fill your schedule with better things. And you've got to start probably by saying no more often. Mistake number 10 is overloading schedules. Mistake number 11 is not seeking help. This is a big one for dudes. Like we are notorious men that is in general for like not stopping for asking directions if you're lost, <laughs> which is always kind of like a funny, you know, I don't know, stereotype or whatever, because I would be like, no, I'm going to stop and ask for help. But in general, you kind of hear this a lot. Like we don't want to be perceived as weak. We don't want to be perceived as needy. We don't want to be perceived as somebody who doesn't have the answers. We want to be the guy that always has it figured out always has always has everything squared away like we want to present ourselves again with pride and ego in a way that says like i got this i don't need anybody else well guess what god did not create you that way god created you to where you need to have godly counsel around you to make better decisions and your life will be blessed and your children's lives will be blessed if you will seek godly counsel, which again, we hope that this ministry and this podcast is a part of that, that we can encourage one another to say, you know what? I don't have this all figured out. There's 12 mistakes here in these last two podcasts that we're talking about, and I have all 12 and I need help. That's a good spot to be in. Why? Because you can get better from there. Where you don't get better is when you make the mistake of not seeking help. Humility and and kicking out pride is so, so critical. You don't have it all figured out. I don't have it all figured out. None of us do, but the Holy Spirit in us wants to counsel us, wants to guide us. And one of the ways that God speaks is through his word, through prayer. And another way is through other believers. So get connected to other men. It, it's why I always in, invite and encourage you guys to check out our ministry, get in the fight.club. You can click join and apply today. It's a free ministry where you can join a group of men who are just fighting for conversations like this. It's a place where you can actually go, be very honest and raw. There's no women there. There's no unbelievers. It's, it's just Christian men who are saying, hey, does anybody have any tips or ideas on parenting for me? Here's the situation I'm in. It's a place where you can go privately, speak and share your heart and get wise counsel. It's so, so necessary. So anyways, if you don't have a group that you can do that in, come check it out. Get in the fight.club, click join, and you can apply today. That being said, there are probably almost undoubtedly men in your life, godly men who would be happy to help you learn some of the things that they've learned probably by making mistakes and screwing up themselves. Ask an older man in your church or in your community what they've learned. Take them to lunch. Take them to coffee. Stop them in the hallway and just say like, hey, man, I'm struggling with this. Just wondered if I could get your opinion. Everybody's happy to share their opinions. Everybody. <laughs> so go do that. Humble yourself, right? Seek help. Lower your ego. And you will find that like not only will your life be blessed, but you will be a better dad as a result. And that's great. That's what we're here for. All right, last one here is mistake number 12, which is neglecting your marriage. One of the greatest gifts you can give your kids 
is a strong marriage. I remember as a kid, my parents saying things like, look, we're never going away. No matter what, <laughs> mom and dad are always going to be here. We're never going to divorce. We will always be here for you no matter what. And there was just like this, that was a very calming, secure kind of thing that came into my heart and life and in my family because my parents just had that commitment that they were going to give us the consistency of they were always going to be together until death do them part. And they've lived up to that. Having a strong marriage does that for a kid. It gives them security. And just think like, again, let me just pause in this because I just know it. this has to be said. If you've been through a divorce, God's grace is there, right? We're, we're really talking in the ideal here. And I know that for all of you, you would probably say, yeah, I wish the ideal was there, but there was this circumstance. I, you know, again, you don't have to justify that the rest of your life either. God knows the story and God's grace is is big enough, but we want to get better, right? So as you listen to this, just know it's not with judgment. It's not with anything harsh. It's not to make you feel more guilty or, or regretful for all those things. But don't we want to, in the ideal setting, strengthen our marriages and get better, right? That's what we're going. We want to help our kids to be safe and to feel secure. And we want them to grow up to be emotionally and mentally strong, spiritually strong. You know, when when marriages fall apart, even those that stay together, but they're not strong, it affects so many things and it affects the life of a kid. And if you want to give your kid the best strength that you can, love your wife spend time with her, prioritize her, invest in that relationship with her. And you go like, what does that got to do with parenting? So much because that child understands that the family is healthy, that the family is strong and they read God's word and they can see that this image of Christ and his church and marriage, the beauty of it for what it is. And they can kind of see this example lived out in front of them. That's the ideal, right? So again, God's grace is necessary in all of life, in all of parenting, and in all of these conversations. Thank God for his grace in our lives. Thank God that if it if you if your marriage hasn't worked out, that God has not given up on you yet. You can still be a great dad, no matter what your situation is, right? So don't neglect your marriage, right? Work on it. Get better at that because it does affect the whole family. All right, quick review. Mistake number seven was prioritizing perfection over connection. And we're trying to flip the switch on that. Mistake number eight was ignoring emotional needs. And we're trying to learn to process emotions, not ignore them and teach our kids to do the same. Mistake number nine was comparison with other parents and just trying to avoid that trap. It's unnecessary. It's unhelpful and it steals your joy. Mistake 10 was overloading your schedules. What do you need to cut out? What is the stuff that's good, but not best, right? Look at that and learn to say no. We talked about not seeking help and what a mistake that is because we need each other. And so finding mentors, finding people, or joining our fight club is all a necessary and helpful thing for you. And then lastly is not neglecting your marriage. When you neglect your marriage, it's a huge mistake and it has ripple effects throughout your whole family. So which of those six, or if you go back to episode 52, which of these 12 are mistakes that God is just prompting you to get better at. Take it as a blessing that God wants you to go further into the mistake and say, okay, let's get better. That's kind of the whole message here is let's live bigger, better lives. Let's get better as dads and as husbands and as men in general, as followers of Jesus. And every every category that we talk about, let's get better, right? Don't let the devil shame you into saying like, well, again, I've gotten divorced or I screwed up this or it's too late here. Reject all of that. The truth is God's not done with you. The truth is that what he has started, he will complete. That God wants you to re-engage in the fight and become a better dad. All right, so if you're listening to this still, thank you. Appreciate you so, so much. Help me out, though, with this. And if you like these conversations, if they're helpful to you, if you think, man, that was good, and maybe God put somebody on your mind, would you just simply share this with them? Just click the link at the top, copy and paste it, text it to a buddy. Maybe just say like, hey, you should check this out. It's a great message. Or you know, send it on your social media and encourage people to check out this podcast. Subscribe to it so you don't miss any 
But again, like we can't reach more men if people don't subscribe and share it, comment or, or engage in some way. So if you find these helpful, join our community, share this information. We're trying to just serve and love our brothers in this way. And again, we can't do that if you don't share it. So appreciate you being here. Appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much for listening. Now you've got to go do the things that you've learned that God is prompting you to do. That's what it means to get in the fight. So let's go. Hey guys, thanks so much for being here today and listening to the show. Please be sure to head over to the website at getinthefight.club. And before you go, if you haven't already, please subscribe, click the like button, and leave us a positive five-star review. It makes a huge difference whenever you do. Have a great day. Go get in the fight.